Hi, my name's Andy. It's a beautiful morning, so I thought I'd bring you outside and get a bit of fresh air. What I'm doing in this video is take you through the circuit diagram for the GEC radio that I showed you in the first part of this video. I got this circuit diagram from the radioworkshop.co.uk and I'll put the address on the screen. It's radio-workshop.co.uk and the guy there, Ray, makes the circuit diagrams available free of charge. So when I come across a circuit diagram, I send it over to him and he can then share it with other enthusiasts. All right, let's go and have a look at the radio. When I left you at the end of uh, part one, I just finished dusting off the top of the chassis and uh, now I've turned the chassis upside down and uh, you can see here, this is where the earth wire uh, would have been fitted on the original three core lead that uh, somebody's replaced it with uh, this uh, two core wire here and uh, I guess the uh, didn't think the earth was going to be important to them. Uh, when you dust around, be extremely careful on the underside of the chassis as there are some things uh, like uh, this little uh, coil in the VHF section there um, that uh, if you uh, deform that then uh, you will, you'll spoil the radio and you, you won't get it back to how it was before. So uh, extremely careful. Uh, something else to be uh, aware of and there's a little wire here which is one of the legs of the uh, IF transformer and although there's no electrical connection to it on the underside of the chassis there's no doubt some sort of connection inside the IF can and if you brush this with uh, the little paintbrush and you, you make contact with the, uh, uh, the screen here um, then reasonably it's going to affect the performance of the radio. So be very careful as you dust around and if it's, if it's not dusty then don't touch it at all. This is one of the pages from the service sheet that I got from the radio workshop uh, for this radio. Uh, so if you want to follow along it, it would be worthwhile you're getting the uh, PDF file uh, for the radio, it's free. Uh, if you've got a problem, uh, I can supply one, but um, I don't have a website open uh, for distribution of things like that. This image shows the uh, upper view, um, the layout of the chassis and the various components. This image shows the uh, under view of the chassis. And if you look at the top, it's uh, marked R and C, and then there's uh, a bunch of numbers across uh, the top of the screen there. And uh, those numbers refer to the uh, resistors and capacitors, respectively. And um, you'll see the same sort of thing on the circuit diagram. Uh, I love these uh, trader uh, circuit uh, data sheets. They're really very useful. In this particular data sheet, uh, there's a helpful uh, wiring color code. Um, don't take it for granted that it's going to be 100% right. Uh, don't take anything for granted just because it's written in black and white. It doesn't mean it's the law. Uh, there can be different versions of a, a radio, different issues, and sometimes they simply get it wrong. Uh, but it's a good indicator. And this, of course, is the circuit diagram. Not to be confused with a wiring diagram. This shows the actual circuit in a diagrammatic form. A wiring diagram shows the position of the components and the layout of the wires to those components. So you can think of the classic uh, map of the London Underground as being a circuit diagram whereas a geographical map of the layout of the various stations and track would be the equivalent of the wiring diagram. What I've done is take the original circuit diagram and uh, retrace it 
and then on the new drawing I've left off things like the dotted line that shows the uh, link between the ganged components uh, like the tuning capacitors and the dotted line that shows the screen around the IF uh, sections and the VHF uh, section so, so anything that gets in the way because uh, it's a bit tricky with the very small image that we get on YouTube but hopefully uh, what I've done will be clearer and uh, I'll only put component values in if I think they help the discussion okay here we are with the full circuit diagram uh, what I've done is coloured in the power supply in red and uh, what I'll do next is to zoom in and uh, just redraw that part of the circuit so here's the uh, new image showing the power supply uh, the mains electrical supply is coming in on the right hand side through a double pole switch so that switch isolates both the live and neutral and that switch is uh, ganged with the tone control and uh, you'll see on the bottom part of the primary there's a little link there and it's showing three positions or three potential positions and that transformer has a tap for 200, 230 or 250 volts AC input. The two uh, vertical lines under the heading TR2 uh, represent the iron core of the transformer and uh, interposed between the iron core and the primary winding on the right you'll see a dotted line and that dotted line uh, that shows an earth symbol or has an earth symbol associated with it represents a screen so that's a copper foil uh, that is in between the primary winding and the other windings it's a very good safety feature and uh, so if the transformer gets damp or if there was a flashover it prevents the AC mains from uh, getting through to other parts of the circuit that is providing of course some idiot hasn't uh, removed the earth wire that uh, would be protecting the equipment to the left of the iron core you can see three windings uh, the one in the middle is center tapped and the center tap goes to ground and is represented by zero as in zero volts uh, each end of that winding are 270 volts AC with respect to the chassis and uh, they are connected to the anode of the rectifier valve the rectifier valve has its own windings to supply voltage for the filament and you can see there that it's 6.3 volts AC and that voltage powers the filament but don't be fooled uh, the filament and the cathode of the rectifier valve are 297 volts DC uh, above earth and uh, I measured that with a little meter and 6.3 volts actually has 297 volts DC impressed upon it so uh, if you think you can touch that think again the bottom winding is again a 6.3 volt AC supply and that feeds the two pilot lights and it goes off to each of the other valves in the circuit and the little uh, reference A there shows up on each valve just to indicate that it's the uh, 6.3 volt supply okay that concludes this second video in the next video I'll be continuing with the DC power supply and smoothing.